Welcome to episode four of the screencast series on getting started with the ASP.NET MVC wrappers for Kendo UI. In this final episode, we'll build on the work that we did in episode three with the Kendo UI grid. We'll turn this grid into a complete editing interface that supports create, update, delete, and even does some validation. We're gonna cover how to enable editing, how to use command columns and toolbars to handle editing actions, what an editor template is and how we can create our own, and what changes need to be made to the grid data source to enable editing communication. We can make the grid editable by calling the editable method. Now, by default, the grid editing mode is inline, and this means that the entire row goes into edit mode. However, the grid also supports in-cell editing, which makes only the active cell editable, and pop-up editing, which displays a pop-up window with editing controls. We'll stick with the inline editing for this demo. We need a way to get this grid into edit mode, so we're going to be needing a command column. This is a column where buttons are displayed, and we want edit and delete buttons. Now these buttons will actually turn into update and cancel buttons automatically when the grid goes into edit mode. Now this takes care of edit and delete, but what about create? For that, we're going to use the grid toolbar. Inside the toolbar, we want a create button. The grid has all of the necessary UI components at this point. If you open the shared folder under views, you will find the editor templates. And this is how Kindle UI knows what sort of UI to display for a given data type. The grid automatically uses the custom editor templates in the shared folder to display the units in stock and unit price fields as numeric text box widgets. Let's create a supplier editor. It's going to be a Kindle UI dropdown list. For the sake of expediency, I have already created controllers for suppliers and categories. And these controllers just return a list of all the items in their respective tables. This supplier editor needs to read the supplier's controller. We'll create another custom editor for the categories that is nearly identical. There are two ways to tell the grid to use these editors. One way would be to simply specify it on the column using the editor template name method. Another, perhaps more elegant way, is to define it on the model on the server. We can use the UI hint property decoration to do this. We'll specify editors for all of the types. We are going to need to modify the column definition for suppliers and categories. We need the entire object, not just the name. But we only want to show the name. So we're going to use a client template for that. We're getting really close to being able to submit requests to the server. We need to tell the grid some information about our data schema first. It needs to know which field is the ID. It's also going to need to know what it should use as default values for the supplier and category dropdowns when a create happens. And this is done by specifying the default value. I'm going to go ahead and pass in default values in the view data object by simply selecting the first object from both the supplier and category tables. The last step in configuring the grid for editing is to add in the create update and destroy transports so the grid knows which URL to call when those events are fired. We, of course, also need the controller methods. Again, for the sake of expediency, I've already created them. The important thing to note here is that the controller methods receive a data source request and a product object. We can then perform the necessary operation on the data context only if the model is valid and then return that result. The edits in the grid are now working but we still have the problem that we can't validate the user's input. This can all be specified on the product model on the server. Decorate the ID with scaffold column false and the product name, units in stock, and unit price with required. Now the grid is editable and input is validated for those three fields. If you made it through all four videos in this series, congratulations. You've already conquered many of the core concepts of the Kindle UI ASP.NET MVC wrappers. Make sure that you check out the online demos which have the ASP.NET code available for you to see as well. Also, use the extensive Kindle UI documentation site when looking for more information on the property or method. And lastly, I highly recommend that you visit the Kindle UI Dojo to learn the JavaScript basics of Kindle UI. We hope you enjoyed this series and found it very helpful. Please feel free to leave your comments about the series, 
It helps us to know how to provide you with the content that you need to be the most successful. Cheers.